What's up, .NET developers? Are you looking to build an app that runs on AWS? Do you have questions about services you can use when you're building those apps? If so, you came to the right place. In this video, we're going to go over the options that are on AWS to host our apps, as well as some services you might like to use when you're building them, all here on AWS for the .NET developer. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another edition of AWS for the .NET developer. I'm Isaac Levin, and I wanted to spend some time talking about some of the AWS services we as .NET developers can use as we build apps. Be sure to like and subscribe this video if you're liking the content that we have here, and be sure to let me know what you're building. All right, so firstly, it might be good to think about what kind of ways we can host apps on AWS. This is probably the first question we may have as we're building that app that runs in the cloud. The first thing we probably should think of is what OS is my app going to run on? Am I building an app that needs to run Windows, like possibly a .NET Framework application? Or do I want to run my app on Linux and take advantage of some of the new development made to me in .NET 6 and beyond? We also should consider what form of hosting do we want. We can choose Compute, where we have a little, a little more control over the environment, but depending on our option, we may have to manage it ourselves. If we would prefer not to, we can also go with a managed solution. Another important thing to consider is whether my app is going to run in a container, and that choice will dictate what kind of services we should be targeting to use. And finally, what if I don't care about the infrastructure at all? I just have some code that I want to run. If that is our preference, we can choose one of the serverless options in AWS to bring that value we are looking for. Now let's dive into these options as well to look at some of the other services we want as a .NET developer. A great place to start with how we can host on an application on AWS is by looking at the compute options we have. These options provide an environment that will allow us to host our .NET apps in the best way, best on our needs. Let's start with Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2 for short. EC2 is a secure and resizable compute platform for virtually any workload. For us, as .NET developers, this could be a web service with IIS on it, for instance. We can manage that app using processes that we are very familiar with already. If you have a ton of flexibility with the configuration of EC2, as you can specify what processor or architecture you want, for instance, ARM if you need it, as well as host operating system you want to run, whether it be Windows, Linux, or even Mac OS. Another great compute option is AWS Elastic Beanstalk, which is a service for deploying and scaling web applications. Giving you a ton of flexibility, but slightly more abstract than EC2, Elastic Beanstalk is a great option if you just need a web server with managed platform updates and built-in application monitoring. And finally, if you're looking to build web applications fast with low cost, Amazon LightSail is a great option. LightSail is a virtual private server, or VPS, that enables you to create an application in just a few clicks, but also scales as you grow. This is a great option for spinning up environments for things like testing, for instance. As we move farther away from bare metal, we start to look at options to build apps that run in containers to ensure a similar configuration experience across my app. The first place to look at when we are considering building our .NET apps and containers is Amazon Elastic Container Service, or ECS. ECS is a fully managed container organization service for, other, for our containerized apps. Because of the container ecosystem is fully managed, we get access to seamless integration with AWS management and governance services, as well as an opportunity to save up to 50% on QP costs due to autonomous provisioning, auto-scaling, and pay-as-you-go pricing. If you're building a ton of apps, all hosted in containers, you more than likely have a ton of Docker files and images sitting around. You can seamlessly store those container images in Amazon Elastic Container Registry, or ECR, and manage as well as deploy them to the container service of your choice. At this point, a ton of us have probably heard about Kubernetes and the value it can provide as we're building a suite of microservices that define our apps. If you want to host your containerized apps in Kubernetes, Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service, or EKS, which is fully managed instance of Kubernetes that runs in AWS. And finally, what if you want containers, but you want to ensure you are the most efficient with your instances of your apps? In that case, AWS Fargate is a serverless compute engine for containers. Because it is fully managed, you can focus on your app without worrying about scale and patching of your environments. And the best part? Fargate is compatible with both ECS and EKS, so all your container options will work in this way. But even containers might be a little bit too much overhead for what we are trying to do with our .NET apps. In that case, we have serverless options that can run our .NET applications without servers. If you're writing a code that just needs to run, for instance, based on a specific event, for instance, a scheduled time or when a database record gets updated or even an HTTP request, AWS Lambda is a great option. Lambda is a serverless compute engine that allows you to run your code without provisioning, managing, or frankly caring about the underlying infrastructure to run your app. This is a great option if you're building apps that follow some event-driven architecture, as well as apps that don't have some state you need to worry about. 
Lambda are great for APIs, but what if your app has a UI? If you're building an app using Blazor WebAssembly, you can use AWS Amplify to host your app. Since Blazor WASM has access to JavaScript interoperability and the output of a Blazor WASM app can run in static web app environments, you can deploy your app to AWS Amplify and take advantage of a fast and secure platform that runs without the need for backend server processing. And when we are building web applications that are APIs, we need to be able to effectively route traffic. Amazon API Gateway is a fully managed service that enables developers to create, publish, maintain, monitor, and secure those APIs at any scale. And when we are building .NET apps, we are usually working with a data source of some kind. With AWS, we have a handful of options to how we store our data. And nothing is more typical when we build .NET apps than a relational database. You can obviously host your database in an Amazon EC2 instance, but you're responsible for managing the entire OS. Rather than that, we can use a managed instance of a relational database. Amazon Relational Database, or RDS, provides multiple relational database options to choose from, including Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle Database, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and MariaDB. Using this service gives you all the value of that relational database we all love, but without the cost of maintenance. But we can go one step further with relational databases. Amazon Aurora is a database made for the cloud, compatible with both MySQL and PostgreSQL, and built with the simplicity and cost-effectiveness of those open-source database engines. You even have the ability to run Aurora serverless, further bringing optimal value for your data workloads. Some applications don't require relational data structure at all, and in that case, there are options as well. One option being Amazon Document DB, which empowers you to scale your JSON scheme workloads using fully managed data of a document database service. This option is very interesting if you already have familiarity with MongoDB, but don't have the capacity to manage it yourself. And then there is a fully NoSQL option in Amazon DynamoDB, which is a fully managed key value and document database that delivers single digit millisecond performance at any scale. We also need to look at non-traditional data sources as well as we talk about options for .NET developers. And in the caching and storage space, AWS has you covered as well. AWS provides a microsecond latency service for in-memory caching in Amazon Elastic Cache, as well as a Redis-compatible, durable in-memory database service for ultra-performance. And finally, you can use file storage options on AWS to store files for your apps that may depend on. Services like Amazon Simple Storage Service, or S3, as well as many other file-based services are there to provide the exact solution you may need when it comes to physical files. We all know our apps create data as well, and sometimes we need to be able to handle that data and harness it to gain valuable insights. Services like Amazon CloudWatch and AWS X-Ray help developers monitor and observe their applications, but also facilitate analyzation and debugging of production workloads and distributed applications, such as those built using a microservice architecture. On top of all the telemetry processing, Amazon Kinesis simplifies collecting, processing, and analyzing real-time streaming data to enable more timely insight gathering. And if you have data existing already in S3, Amazon Athena is a serverless interactive query service that makes it easy to analyze data using standard SQL. If your apps have secrets and other security-related requirements, AWS provides services to help you there as well. For sensitive information, AWS Secrets Manager helps folks protect secrets needed to access applications, services, or other IT resources. There is also AWS Key Management Service, or KMS, which makes it simple to create and manage cryptographic keys across a wide range of AWS services. And if you have precious certificates, AWS Certificate Manager allows you to provision, manage, and deploy public and private SSL or TLS certificates for use with other AWS services, as well as your internal connected resources. And those are just some of the many services we as .NET developers have access to in AWS. There are also services in the AI and ML space, as well as identity and authentication, IoT, and even media services. The options are limitless to what .NET developers can build on AWS, and I'd love to hear what kind of apps you're building on AWS and what services are your favorite. So be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and reach out if you want to talk more. That is all for this episode. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time on AWS for the .NET developer.